After a successful tournament with Byleth, it's time for another Day 3 challenge with a new character. For this, I went into the YouTube comment section of the Byleth video and chose 4 characters. Zora, Piranha Plant, Rosalina and Zero Suit Samus. I started a poll live on Twitch for everybody to vote and after a very close battle between Zora, Plant and Rosalina, <laughs> no. the plant took it home. Make some noise for this plant! I had to analyze, practice, play and become a plant. And yeah, a plant I became, I just showed right before recording. <laughs> On day one, I got into training mode and practiced a few combo routes with plant. I noticed quickly that plant doesn't have huge combo routes and more 2-3 to three hit combos. As a bit of help and inspiration, I watched Frenzy Light's video about bread and butter combos for plant. And inspiration it gave me. Wait, th this gave me actually some ideas. Pitui, the neutral B is not only a good tool for extending combos, it is THE ledge trapping tool for plant. So I got to battlefield and played a bit around with ledge traps. After spending some time in training mode and understanding what each and every move does and how I can use it to my advantage, it was finally time to hop into Elite Smash and test out my green friend. And I have to say, it started out very good. Seeing my first match being Samus on FD, I was not sure if I can do this. Ooh, we already got a big combo going! But I completely destroyed the first stock. That was a good stock though, wow! And even managed to win with a two stock. And the Petui finishes it. Nice! Was a good first game though. I was definitely pumped about that. I quickly realized how good of a move Petui is and how it functions as a fantastic anti-air option. Nice! Good game as well. Also we had Team Trees in the chat who gave me tips throughout the practice days. If you use the C-Stick while you use down B, plan will stop attacking. Oh really? So thank you a lot for helping me Twitch chat. <laughs> Fortunately enough for me, I got a lot of rough matchups in Elite Smash like Polotena and Pyra Mifra to play against to have the true top tier versus low tier experience. Not only my combo game and neutral got better with plan, but also my edge guards and ledge traps. But also, what is this shit? What? I know what I've signed up for, but come on. Petui plus ratio plus you fell off Sonic. After some rough matches, I finally got the combo food I deserve to make myself feel better. Though I cannot rely on only DKs getting in my way in the tournament. What a stock, holy! Why are you using this DK for free clips? Money! My plant became more clean every single game. I used frame traps, shocking tools, bear anti-airs, ledge trap, petui mix-ups. This stock had it all. Ooh, that was sick though. My plant was absolutely relentless in this game. Almost took the stock again. Oh my god, my plant's moving! Jesus, what am I doing with this wolf? That poor wolf didn't send a single chance. How are you doing? I'm, I'm popping off. I'm popping off today. That's how I'm doing. But as you all know, everybody gets clipped back at some point. That comboed into... Oh shit. After experiencing the cheese in its full glory, I went on in Elite Smash to cheese everybody back. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Matchups I thought were troublesome became fine. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and right into the Petui. Matchups I thought were good became even better. <laughs> gotcha. Of course, you should never treat Elite Smash as a competitive environment, because it isn't. And I really mean that. There, there's no way. The Petui was out for like 100 seconds or something like that. And she still flip kicks in the Petui. Also, can we talk about how early up smash killed this Bayonetta? <laughs> no way! There was 78%. There was no charge at all. After 4 hours of practicing planned non-stop in training mode and Elite Smash, it was finally time to wrap things up and call it a day. <laughs> Wow, that came out of nowhere! <laughs> for my first day with Plant, I felt pretty good and I couldn't wait for the second day. Day 2 arrived and it started without a stream. I analyzed some of my matches, I watched how other top level Piranha Plants played like Brood and made some notes to implement into my game plan as well. I learned from Brood that forcing reactions with Poison Cloud can be very good, even though there is no hit stun, it makes your opponent feel pressured. Okay, got the back here though. Downby was now used to punish laggy moves and power through with my armor. Ah, got him! The combination of Poison Cloud into a lot of other attacks like Downby or F-Tilt can lead to a devastating shield break. And the good part about shield breaks for plant is that you can still charge another Poison Cloud for massive damage without waking them up for a finishing blow. That's a 
Jason! Even though I knew that plant excels in ledge trapping, I tried to see when I can implement Nair Edge Guards against certain characters. Especially a hero with bounce so I cannot use Patui on. Let's go, that was good. Oh, also we got a plant that along the way. I know you all love to see me play some janky as did us against other players. Yikes, that was not good. By becoming the plant, I learned how important it is to stay hydrated. Also, I don't know why, but I felt like Wolf is one of my best matchups with Plant. I destroyed basically every single Wolf in the lead smash. <laughs> what? After finishing off my boss with the how I like to call it pot and chop, pot and chop, and carrying Bowser all over the stage with my moves, I escorted him out of the stage and even became the new leader of the Mushroom Kingdom. To be honest with you, day 2 was a little bit cursed throughout the day, because we also had free falls and item matches, which might not be the best way to practice for a tournament. What? And trust me when I say this, the Rosalina matchup was next to Villager one of my worst matchups throughout the two days. And what is the best thing you can do for a tournament with rough matchups like these? Correct, you avoid them. I don't want to encounter a Rosalina in tournament. Finally, tournament day arrived, and before playing in it, I went into a lead smash and tried to warm up a little bit. Let's see if the plant bears fruits to our hard labor. Usually on a good tournament day, I suck in a lead smash, but today I crushed a lead smash. <laughs> because of my seed, I had to wait in winners round 2 for my opponent, and I did what every reasonable person would do. I stalked them. I had no time at all to physically prepare for a matchup right now, but at least I could prepare myself mentally and think about my approaches on the matchups. While thinking about it, Asha, a Ryu Ken main, won against their opponent Daltoki. For me, the tournament finally started. Asha and I played in the best of three against each other with their Ryu versus my plant on small battlefield. I started off by doing an insane amount of damage while only having 53%, so I was feeling very confident. But then this happened. Oh shit! Oh, the dead sucks! I got hit by one focus attack and lost the stock for it. But I answered back quickly. Okay, there we go. Oh, bro, I shouldn't get hit by that stuff. The whole next stock, I ran over Asher and did a zero to death on the Ryu. Oh, let's go! The zero to death. Oh, I needed that. I had a full stock lead, and even though Asher did a good job at bringing it back, it wasn't enough for the Ryu player. Or back here. That's fine. Now the counter pick goes to Asher, and they switched to Pokemon Stadium 2. But what I didn't know was, they had a little mech as well. What? Even though this character is not one of the best, to put it lightly, the KO Punch is one of the scariest moves in Smash Ultimate. After beating me up on my first stock to high percent, I somehow managed to answer back and take the stock before Asher. Oh, thank god, that was so sketch. But going down right after. I almost got the second stock with an edge guard but spaghetti so hard and left an opening. Oh! However, my opponent anticipated an attack, shielded and wasn't able to react to my fluke. Shortly after, I took the second stock and dealt a bit of damage before my second stock was taken as well. Not the F smash. Asha was on the last stock on high percent, but gained the KO punch. Even though we had a huge percent difference, this game was practically even. I baited out an attack with my down B, which has armor and withstands attacks, to get rid of the KO punch, finish them off and win the game. Let's the go! I got the little mech. Whew. My plan won its first tournament set and I was pretty happy about it. We won winners round two against little fucking mech. My next opponent was Ascro, a Ness main. When playing in Elite Smash, this was one of the matchups which I was surprisingly confident about. The whole first game went very well for me. While I took two stocks from Ascro, they only took one against me. Again, I had a full stock lead. Uh, not enough. That's enough. When landing on the platform, Escrow got their shield out in time to defend against my up smash. I got sent off stage, but still knew that their shield must be a bit low from my previous attack. Enough for my down B to cause a shield break. GG. After saying GG confidently, I tricked out the unconscious Ness even more to secure the stock. <laughs> no, no, ju just end that. Just end that. <laughs> my shield break punishes are always the worst. We don't need to have cool shield break punishes if we just can't take a stock, you know? Game 2 went the same way with me having an early stock lead against the Ness player when suddenly this happened. I somehow survived getting milked and was back in the game again. After sending Escrow to the ledge, I made a little trick to bait them. I dashed quickly towards the ledge so they would feel safe rolling in. However, this is just to deceive them. 
I quickly dash back again and finish the game and the set with an up smash. Nice! 2-0! This tournament went pretty smooth so far, but the more we progress, the harder it gets. I had to play second, a Palutena main. Game 1 started out pretty even with us doing about an equal amount of damage to each other, but I secured the first stock just to go down early afterwards. There was this one key moment in the second stock where I barely missed my up smash and lost my stock before second. No! I had that! I answered back quickly and took their stock with an up throw though. Nice! Okay, we're still in the game. The last stock was as even as it can get with both of us ending up at high percent. Second was offstage but managed to come back and throw me into an edge guard and ledge trap situation from which I couldn't recover anymore. Ah, oh, that was rough, but it's doable. For game 2 I wanted a bit of a wider stage, so I picked a slightly larger PS2. Second was able to take my first stock with only 74% and I knew I had to change something. I took the first stock of second and fell back in the game again. Okay, I didn't gain so much percent so that's fine. But then this happened. I felt so stupid in this moment and had a rough time trying to bring this back, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Ah! Uh, yikes! Yes, game 1 was pretty close, but seconds adaptation in game 2 and my mistakes were just enough to secure their victory, so it's good games. After losing the last set, I had to do a loser's run and my first opponent there was Garou, a Pokemon trainer main. Funnily enough, I'm incredibly bad at the matchup with Link, however, when I encountered Poke mains in Elite Smash, it went very well. It started off good with me taking the first stock off of Garou, catching the landing with my Petui. I dealt a lot of damage to the second stock and even took it before losing my stock with another Petui. Ooh, that catch! Okay, wait a second. This is looking good. I was in Bear Grylls mode, survived everything and had this insane recovery. Oh, that recovery was so good! But went down shortly afterwards anyway. Never mind, but still, I like that recovery. Nonetheless, I got the last stock off Garou and won my first game. Dip. The second game started on Hollow Bastion, and Garou started off very strong with them taking my stock with a Charizard back air oh, no. and inflicting a bunch of damage on me before losing their stock. But then somehow I managed to throw Garou off stage and hit two Petuis in a row to take the lead. Ooh, wait a second. I don't know how I was so far behind at first and then managed to be no late on my second stock. And I kept my second stock throughout the entire match and used one last Petui on the hanging ivory saw to win the set and move on no to losers round six. Oh, that was so good. Let's go. 2-0. <laughs> if there's one thing that scares me, it is players having a character related tag. And this was no difference for Mr. Misfire, the Luigi main. As every single set before that, yes, that is true. We started on small battlefield. I cannot tell you enough how much trouble I had with Luigi's down B. Mr. Misfire used them always at the right time and I couldn't get many combos going. This whole set was all about chip damage and not comboing. Well, at least for me. With high percent, I took the first stock offstage, but Mr. Misfire answered back quickly and saw themselves shortly after in a huge stock lead. Oh god. At this point, I knew I had to change my game plan to get something going here. But it was a little too late and Mr. Misfire won the first game with a down B. I know that Luigi likes to have more flat stages for the zero to death combos. However, I wanted to take the risk and go on a stage like Town and City. I could take stocks with Petui and Edge Gods early and the platforms are high enough to save me from the plumber. Even when Mr. Misfire took my stock first, I entered back immediately afterwards with the good old invisible trick. Got him. They didn't see that one coming. I got Mr. Misfire offstage and secured the next stock with a down air spike and was for the first time in the set in the lead. And apparently they are not called Mr. Misfire for nothing. They got the 1 in 10th chance for a misfire but this did not help them at all. That was a very lucky break for me. It was the last game, best of 3. The set count is 1-1. Whoever wins this will advance to loses round 7. Mr. Misfire counterpicks Hollow Bastion and oh boy what a match. We both did not want to go to each other. I used my Poison Cloud in Petui, Mr. Misfire used the Plunger and Fireballs. This whole game 3 was as even as it can get. We both took each of our stocks off, it was a constant back and forth and the game already lasted for 5 whole minutes. We both were at our last stock with over 100%. Mr. Misfire edge got me relentlessly but I somehow managed to get back on stage and throw the Plumber off stage. I knew when I edge got them after the side B and get a hit on, I would win the game. So I jumped off stage used my nair and unfortunately missed. I was ready for the reverse edge cut and my finger on the shoulder trigger was ready for the tech. 
but unfortunately I mistimed it. I tried to take that shit. Oh no, really, it ends like that. Mr. Misfire won the set and I was out at 13th at the tournament and the challenge was over. Of course, a loss like that hurts a lot, but honestly, I got pretty far for only playing Piranha Plant for 3 days and I had a ton of fun during this challenge. After all, I'm not alone in this tournament, everybody is a player like you and me who wants to win. And today, the better players won. GG's to everybody, I'm still in tour and thank you so much for watching. Feel free to comment down below which character I should try next for the challenge. And if you liked the video, feel free to sub, like and ring the bell. Bye bye.